Have you ever been told that you're not allowed to do that? I know that in religious circles, we can often be told all of the do's and don'ts of living a Christian life. And that can be helpful at times, but that can also be harmful. So we have to understand for ourselves what it means to live a Christian life. Listen, as born-again believers, real Christian people, real Jesus followers, we don't need others to tell us when we mess up, to tell us when we have walked away or strayed away from the path that God has for us. Yes, it's important to have accountability partners. Absolutely. I recommend that. But when you have people just criticizing you and condemning you and talking negatively into your life about the things that you're missing the mark on, the things that you're not getting quite right, that is not helpful at all. Amen. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Michelle, and what you will find here on my channel is biblical encouragement that encourages you to grow and mature in your own relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, because that is the only way to live a life of victory. And if you come here all the time, I just want to thank you for allowing me to speak biblical truth into your life. And today we're going to be talking about drinking alcohol. We're going to be talking about if that is a sin or not. So don't go anywhere. That's coming up next. Listen, we know we should not be doing anything in excess, especially when it comes to worldly things, right? We know that. You know, I want to talk specifically though about drinking alcohol. Listen, I grew up in an alcoholic home, okay? I am sharing my dad's testimony with his permission. He shares it frequently at churches just to help people to understand what God does in the lives of people who seem so far away from being able to live this Christian life. Listen, nobody is out of reach for God, okay? Nobody. So I grew up in an alcoholic home and my dad drank heavily when I was growing up, okay? We had parties at our house like every weekend. And once I became old enough to drink, and yes, I'm referring to not being 21 years old. Once I became allowed to drink at my house, I started drinking and I totally thought that this was normal, that that's what you're supposed to do on Friday and Saturday nights. You're supposed to get drunk and, and party and hang out and have a great time and just give in to all of your fleshly, worldly desires. Like that was normal. That's how people lived. So I grew up hearing about the Lord. You know, I grew up hearing about religious things, but I was never open to it. I was never um, interested in it, right? So like I never gave it much thought, you know, after I heard about it. I just went about my everyday life living however I wanted to live, okay? I didn't just consume alcohol though when I was going through those difficult, dark, trying times, all right? I dabbled in other drugs, but Thankfully, I was never ever hooked on any hard drugs and I'm so thankful for that. I can see the Lord, how he worked in my life throughout those years without me even being thankful or paying attention to him. Just reminds me of that verse in 2 Timothy that says that the Lord is faithful even when we are faithless because he cannot deny himself. He knew what my life was going to become. He knew who I was going to become in his family. And so he protected me and he kept me safe and he guided me through those difficult and trying years. But around the time when I was about 15, I think my dad quit drinking. And so our home changed drastically. But at that time, I was not ready to change. So I continued in my negative lifestyle for many years after my dad quit drinking. You know, I was young, I was dumb, I was immature, and I was heading in the wrong direction fast. But in the midst of my 
darkest hours, I also made a few good choices. And I just like to remind people of that or tell them that for the first time, because I believe it's evidence that God wasn't even close to giving up on me. He knew that I was going to be a voice for his son. And so I believe that he guided and directed me through every one of those bad choices and good choices. And I didn't even know it at the time. So listen, the Bible does say that we are not to be drunkards. But can Christians drink? Listen, I just want to be clear. Drinking alcohol is not a sin, okay? Regardless of what many people say, Christians have grown up hearing that it's a sin to drink alcohol. In Scripture, nowhere, nowhere in Scripture does it condemn alcohol or, or prohibit consumption in moderation, okay? It doesn't. We have to remember that Jesus drank he drank wine with the religious leaders, and they accused him later on of being a drunkard. Listen to what Luke 7, 34 says. It says, the son of man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. How wrong they were. You know, of course, Jesus never, ever got drunk, but he did drink wine. He made water into wine. I mean, most of us are familiar with that story. And it would have been normal for him to enjoy a drink with his friends, right? It was also tradition for Jews to drink wine at the yearly Passover. And we know from scripture that Jesus participated routinely in the Passover. So he also instituted the Lord's Supper, which included bread and wine. So it's very clear that drinking is not a sin. Otherwise, Jesus would not have done it because we know from scripture that Jesus was sinless. However, drunkenness is a sin. You know, Christians are Forbidden, really, to get drunk. Ephesians 5.18 says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. And you can also see that in Proverbs 21 and in Proverbs 23.20 in Isaiah 5.22. So this is a command from the Spirit-inspired apostle not to get drunk. So I believe that getting drunk and being a drunkard is a sin. Listen to what Galatians 5, 19 and 21 says. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy drunkardness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live this way will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if we are living in those ways, if we are living by the flesh, we know it. We know that we are living in such a way that does not glorify the Lord. So we don't need people to constantly condemn us or tell us where we are falling short. We have the, the scriptures. We have the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us. We have everything we need to live a life of godliness. Does that mean that we're not going to sin? Absolutely not. It means we need God's word in Jesus all the more. Jesus came to help us overcome sin. And without him, I'm sorry, we simply cannot do it. So I just want to encourage you today. If you're struggling with alcohol, I want you to reach out. Reach out to those around you who can help you with love and compassion and mercy and grace. That means real, true followers of Jesus Christ. And I want you to pray that the Lord would deliver you from it. Because friends, that is what I am going to do. I am not 
a drunkard. But at times, I feel the desire to get drunk. So I just want to be open and honest with you and with the Lord so that he can deliver me from the desires of the flesh. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have given us guidance and instructions and directions in your holy word. And Lord, you have given us the Holy Spirit to live it out. Lord, and we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you want to hear more biblical truth, more biblical encouragement, check out this video right here on how to live a life surrendered to the Holy Spirit so that you live a life by the Spirit and not by the flesh. All right, take care. I'll see you next Wednesday. God bless.